All right, again, um, to save time, we're not going to go through the whole mechanism here. Can anyone predict what the product would be from this step? Maybe we can just try drawing the product, or yeah, let's put it in words first. What type of compound are we going to end up with here? What's going to happen here? The, well, the H will first protonate, mm -hmm. and then the NH2 will attack, will attack with its carbon chains. Mm -hmm. And then one of the H's will fall off. Mm -hmm. And the O. The OH will fall off because the electrons from the N are going to come down and make a double bond, so you'll end up with an And M. That's right. Okay, good. Notice that what type of functional group are we starting with here? Ketone. Ketone. And so this is a nucleophilic attack on an aldehyde or a ketone. So we want to apply one of our four categories. You described this right. I don't know if you remember which category. Category three. Category three. We've seen that primary amines go through category three reactions. So let's see if we can just draw the product. Uh, you described the mechanism well, but at the same time, let's just draw the product. Category three attack. Um, we have to have both of these protons, right? Because the only way that nitrogen can form two new bonds is by breaking two bonds. So this reaction would not have worked for a secondary amine. Remember that a secondary amine would have to do a category four reaction and form an enamine. So this is only working because this is primary with two hydrogens. Okay. Now, Take a guess. What, what do you think that this reagent might do to this? To what? To the ketone? Oh, I'm sorry, that. to this. So this is our next step. Turn the whole, turn both those double bonds into ATs? Yeah, that's right. So let's draw the product from that. That sounds right. Walk through the mechanism. Good. Um, I expected you to be able to figure this out, even though we've never seen it before, because we've just been talking about this is just another hydrogenation. We've discussed how what hy um, molecular hydrogen tends to do to double and triple bonds. Last term we saw how molecular hydrogen um, added to double and triple um, out, uh, carbon bonds. Um, to turn them into single bonds. Earlier today, I think we talked about how we could hydronize, hi, um, hydrogenate carbon-nitrogen triple bonds. We talked about how we could hydrogenate cyanide. Well, it stands to reason we could also hydrogenate a carbon-nitrogen double bond. So now this carbon has an extra hydrogen. But you don't need to draw the extra hydrogen here because you can treat it like a hidden hydrogen. But, and I think you guys got this right, you must draw the hydrogen here. You're not allowed to have hidden hydrogens on the nitrogen. You've got to make sure you've got the right number of hydrogens on the nitrogen. So this has an extra hydrogen, and this carbon also has an extra hydrogen, which you can either draw or not, depending on what you feel like. But this one has to be drawn. Well, what type of functional group do we make here? Uh, amine. So this is another way to synthesize amines. Yet another way to synthesize amines. So we started with one bad way to synthesize amines. We talked about how a simple SN2 is not a very good way to synthesize amines because of polyamination. Um, but we shouldn't really uh, complain about that too much because we've come up with lots of good ways since then to make amines. So here's another good way to make an amine. This is a way you can make an amine out of an aldehyde or a ketone. So the, um, the point here is first you make the imine, and then you hydrogenate. So these would be two separate steps. You would number these as two separate steps. So basically we've seen that anytime you have a carbon-nitrogen double or triple bond, you can hydrogenate it to make it into a single bond, and then you get the normal amine. So nitriles and imines can both be made into amines. Uh, before I forget, um, now, 
the book originally said that these types of reactions need an acid or a base catalyst. But then for some reason, as the book goes on, it usually leaves out the catalyst. I don't know why that is. But anyway, um, you can expect to see that this is oftentimes written without the catalyst. I don't know if that's because you don't really need a catalyst or because people are just sloppy or what. Um, but this is not like a trick question. You're not supposed to say, oh, no reaction because there's no catalyst. You should still assume there's going to be a Category 3 reaction here, whether they mention the catalyst or not. Uh, I don't think this term you're ever going to see any of those trick questions where the answer is no reaction anymore, or not, not for the most part. There's going to be reactions. Okay. Um, so what's the name of this reaction? Reductive amination. Not animation, but amination. I guess it's amination because we're putting in an amine group, and it's reductive because of this step, because we're doing a reduction. Canning hydrogens is a reduction. Uh, the book mentions that there's another reducing agent you could use. You could also use uh, sodium cyanoborohydride. Does that ring any bells? I don't know if your instructor yeah. talked about that. Um, so the book also mentions that you could use sodium cyanoborohydride. So that would be an alternative for the second step. It just turns out that that's another reducing agent that perhaps you need to have memorized. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.